an African American male. Could we be thinking about this case differently? Would it sound differently? Would we conceptualize it differently? I'm just curious what you guys think about that, so gender of the actual client. I, so, okay, this is from my personal experience. So, I have a twin brother. You have a twin brother? Yeah, so oh, you're special. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, we've, I've been fat, we've been fat since I can remember. And so, the message he received about being fat versus me, so for him, it was like, encourage him to go play football. Like, oh man, you're going to go to college, you're going to be a linebacker. Yeah. And since him, oh, who are you? <laughs> <laughs> I hope that was our camera. <laughs> so it was all positive on his end versus um versus me. It was like um and when we would sit at the table, he would get an extra piece of chicken. Like it was just like, like, like little things like that. It was like they would encourage him to be bigger so he can fill this role of yeah. hyper masculinity. Versus um me it's like, okay, at one point she'll get out of it. She'll lose the weight and all that stuff. So it was very different. Interesting. Okay. Yes. Oh, I just had a language. I'm I'm about language, y'all. I'm sorry. You <laughs> to go on that journey with me. But I wanted to just clarify. I think that there's something important about saying that like sex assigned at birth, right, versus versus uh, sure. male or female or who we like. And identity. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Anyone else? This client was male or identified as male. Can you think about it differently? If this person came in and said, I don't like my body, I engage in binging or purging. I think we might be more, the, or I guess I would be more, my bias would lean that eating disorders are predominantly female, so maybe more hesitant to diagnose with a, a, a larger male to not inst instinctively say you have eating disorder. Okay, so even what we're calling the thing. Interesting. Mm -hmm. um, I think if he was coming in and saying that I'm binging and purging, I would really pay attention because I think males, when it comes to male eating disorders, it's so much more hidden, I think, than women because it's not really visible and I don't think there's as much support for it as an adult. And so I Which would, can impact if it is even reported. Right, right. And, um, and I would look at what males, or what messages he received as a male growing up about body image and because males have their own um, body types and um, role, uh, the ways that masculinity plays into it for uh, his image of himself. Okay. Interesting. Yes. I was thinking that if, he's, if he came in and was sharing those things, then he's got a lot of courage. Wow. Yeah. Would you highlight that in, in the session? Yeah. Because I'm thinking of like, like, for me, just noticing all like kind of what ads and what society sends messages about men that even men you need to look in a particular way. You need to be fit or you need to be very active, and if you're not, then there's kind of some negative messages about that. And for him to just be open of like I'm, I'm like my body, that's that's pretty profound to say that. I would also want to know what larger systems he's a part of. Um, so I grew up in like a farm town where football was king. And so the, the culture around food is incredibly unhealthy. Um, between having like farming communities and football, like what people did to their bodies was, was not great for them in the long term. And so there were a lot of men who were older who had really damaged their bodies pretty drastically in their like teen years and in their early twenties. And to be able to see like what he was seeing. Um, because you know, sometimes people identify that younger and they're like, I don't want this, but like, how do I skip this cycle? I was just going to point out that it's interesting, like your comment about like it being very courageous to speak out about this if you're a male, that if it was flipped, like, would we see that as courageous being a female or a woman or a young lady, like things like that? It's just maybe if a female or woman comes out and says that they're dealing with this, it's seen as like, well, this is very normal and it's a struggle and women get that pressure but for men it's like whoa it's a big deal that you came out and said that you know sure sure, sure. And i also think i mean someone mentioned it earlier but just thinking about the therapist so if i'm a male client going in and talking with a female therapist 
what my, my experience might be like. And I went in and talked to a male, um, what that might be like. Um, so I think it, it's definitely important for us to think about our role um, and the gender identity of our clients as well. Um, what would your role as a therapist be in working with this client? Like, what would you, what would be your role? I feel like a, a part of it, um, because, well, because she's an adolescent especially, is really engaging the family and providing, like, psychoeducation to the family. And um, so how would you do that? Well, I think I would want to first kind of understand the way they're seeing whatever's happening. Um, and I think there's a number of ways to do that. Um, one thing that I talk about with my table is um, I think that sometimes, not just with eating disorders, but with a lot of things, parents feel a lot of shame, or like they're being blamed. And I think um, doing something like a like a body image or um, kind of like eating behavior genogram can be really <laughs> helpful in kind of helping parents to see like, oh, this is part of a bigger system, and I'm not to blame, and kind of get them engaged in care. Excellent. Well. Excellent. Um, I was thinking my role would be to be like a reflective mirror in the sense that all the experiences that she's going through, for me to experience it in through my own struggles of body image, what my culture is, so like just to offer that different perspective and how I'm able to see him or yeah, her or him, whoever it is, and the difference in the struggle and build that space for help me understand this more so she can maybe start to build um, a different narrative or help me understand her story of the struggle. So kind of, I was thinking more of like a reflective mirror. Wow. That's interesting. I like that. Okay. So I'm going to move down a little bit. Um, have you ever experienced concerns about your body image, weight, or physical features? Anybody feel comfortable? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> to engage in the we all we want to make sure that we protect confidentiality around therapists. <laughs> and we talk about self disclosure, so when and where appropriate. Oh, I was just gonna like yeah, yes, period. Okay. <laughs> but, <laughs> period. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Wait, uh, before, before you start speaking, this is being recorded, so if you want me to stop recording, I took oh, the end. It's fine. <laughs> um, yes, uh, body image, weight, physical features from family, which is very culturally embedded to, you know, a lot of, um, like, in the Philippines in particular, uh, there's nicknames given on physical features, and so, like, I have an aunt who would be called Tita Taba, which is literally just, like, Aunt Fat, <laughs> like, Aunt Fatty, so I get called Taba, you know, my no my mom would talk about my nose, um, and how big it was, so for the longest time, I thought, like, I had, like, this enormous nose and took me into college to realize like I look normal um, so <laughs> like I mean it was only until multiple people were telling me like that's weird that you, that she would say that to you um, and then also obvious weight issues but trying to lose weight my entire life um, and it wasn't until I had a partner that was really supportive and was constantly just like no you look great and then finally I started thinking about myself like now I feel good <laughs> Um, so, can you turn it off for a second? Mm -hmm. 